The best story is one which makes you feel an authentic range of emotions. It intersperses times of genuine happiness with ones of real despair, mimicking harsh realities of life when things have gotten so terrible. When you're dealt a hand like this, difficult decisions must be made quickly while their consequences stay with you for life. Joel is a man who lives this reality, making choices as situations beyond his control are thrown at him, often unfairly. The Last of Us is a title which takes storytelling to an unsettling level of realism, resonating so deeply with its audience because it pries at the mixed emotions of real life. These feelings of self-doubt, joy, grief, and confusion come to the player through Joel, a normal man by every measure. Normal, save for his bearded manliness, yet still caring for and protecting children. Melt. Yes, Joel is a whiskery vehicle of testosterone and alphaness, but still he remains a teddy bear, even if it's buried beneath some real shit. Those complexities make all the difference in building his character, but what are they exactly? And how do they make us experience those mixed feelings of doubt and relief, which so often permeate our own lives? Joel's narrative and his reactions to its events explain it all. In the story, you never knew. At the start of it all, we see Joel and his daughter Sarah on a regular night. She gives her dad a watch. Its importance will grow immensely, but for now, it's no more than a touching gift from daughter to father. Not long after, Sarah falls asleep and gets tucked in by her pre-bearded dad. As the night goes on, however, a phone call wakes Sarah. It's from Joel's brother Tommy telling her to put her dad on, but the call goes dead without explanation. The preteen goes on a suspenseful search for Joel until he abruptly enters and shuts the door, grabbing a gun. Now why would he? Oh, that's why. Thank God we're in Texas. The two run to their front door with Joel's brother Tommy waiting in a truck outside. They start a drive out of the county while the radio plays only silence despite intense coverage of this catastrophe just minutes ago. Hordes of people are running away from something, but Tommy decides to go upstream, slowly dodging these terrified people when BAM! T-BONE! Sarah's leg is broken, leaving Joel to carry her and putting Tommy on gun patrol. The city is hellish, zombies tackling and infecting the populace as explosions rattle the streets and destroy buildings. Finally, the group makes it to temporary safety with Tommy holding back zombies behind a door, telling Joel to carry Sarah to the highway. Joel obliges with new zombies following suit until they're gunned down by a soldier who has orders to kill any civilian he sees. Joel begs him to let them live to no avail. He opens fire, then points his sight at Joel, giving Tommy a clear shot. But it doesn't end happily. You're gonna be okay, baby. Stay with me. I'm gonna pick you up. Two decades separate Sarah's death and the next chapter of The Last of Us. In that time, society has been ripped apart by the infection, a cordyceps fungus which grows in the central nervous system. This type of fungus exists in real life, often only infecting insects, changing their behavior to facilitate the fungus's reproductive cycle. For instance, an infected ant will climb to the top of a plant, secure itself there, and then die, leaving the fungus at an optimal level location and temperature to spread. This fortunately fictional form of cordyceps uses human hosts, multiplying within their brain and body, making them crave uninfected flesh to spread the disease. This fungus has turned Joel's life from normal to tragic in a matter of hours. His daughter died in his arms when not long before he was tucking her in and kissing her goodnight. Anybody can empathize with a crippling loss like that. Joel's reaction to Sarah's death is far from complex. It's his reactions to events yet to come which define his character and explains why this game cuts so deep, why it feels so sincere. Now, 
Joel lives in a quarantine zone near Boston, an area heavily militarized to keep the disease out. He's a smuggler who lives day to day. We know nothing of what's happened to him these past 20 years. At the moment, we only know Joel is on track to recovering a shipment of stolen weapons. He and his partner Tess find the culprit, discovering he sold the cash to a revolutionary group called the Fireflies before putting a bullet in him. In return for their weapons back, the leader of the Fireflies, Marlene, offers Joel and Tess a deal. They will have to smuggle a teenage girl named Ellie to a Firefly group outside the quarantine zone. The night of the smuggling arrives. Ellie, Joel, and Tess make their way out of the quarantine zone but are stopped and tested for the fungus by soldiers. The smugglers get the upper hand, however they notice the reading for Ellie shows she is infected. Ellie claims she was bitten three weeks ago, making Joel and Tess skeptical because infection always sets in within two days. But if Ellie speaks the truth, she can be used to find a cure. Casting their doubt aside, they press on to the rendezvous point outside the military's perimeter, discovering the fireflies they plan to meet have been killed. Worse still, Tess admits she's been bitten. With that, she demands the two go on without her while she holds off incoming soldiers. Joel reluctantly agrees. Once to safety, they get a truck from a man named Bill and set off to find Joel's brother Tommy in hopes he knows the whereabouts of other fireflies. The mission proves dangerous when Ellie and Joel are passing through ever-lovely Pittsburgh when a man claims he's injured and begs for help. Joel calls bullshit, ducking and gunning it while bandits pop up and open fire. The pair then crashes into a warehouse and kills off the bandits. It's here we start seeing the true side of Joel. During one of Ellie's many attempts to pry at this grisly man's brain, she asks, How did you know about the ambush? He responds, I've been on both sides, and goes on to imply he's killed innocent people to survive. Surviving is dirty work, it seems. Some time later, Ellie and Joel finally locate Tommy living safely in a well-guarded settlement near a hydroelectric dam in Wyoming. Once there, Joel reveals to Tommy Ellie's immunity and asks him for gear and manpower to help get her to a Firefly encampment to reverse engineer a cure. Tommy isn't quite so cooperative, casting doubt on their past together and revealing more to Joel's character these past 20 years when a surprise attack makes its way to the base. You still remember how to kill, right? Yeah. Joel is not the pillar of morality or great hero like so many protagonists before him. He is a survivor. These imperfections are what make The Last of Us a chilling experience filled with the mixed emotions of real life. Unlike a typical Hollywood good guy, he doesn't always make the right decision or the most moral one. Rather, he makes decisions based on fear, anger, indifference, willing to rob and kill for fear of his own death. His realness is what makes us experience those mixed emotions because it hits closer to home than a clean-cut douchewad knowing what to do at every moment. We all feel twinges of both negative and positive emotions, reacting at times irrationally or immorally when we're overwhelmed by our lives. Joel lives this very same reality under terrifying circumstances. Although he's the protagonist of this title, he really is just like us. And it makes us feel the darkness and light of this game that much more. Next, Ellie overhears Tommy's change of heart, now aware she's to continue on with him instead. Joel doesn't trust himself to protect Ellie, or at least that's what he says. Only then does she bring up Sarah and Joel treating her like his daughter. After another skirmish with bandits, Joel changes his mind, telling Ellie he wants to continue their journey together. And so, Tommy points them towards the University of Eastern Colorado to find the Fireflies. Upon arrival, they find it abandoned, save for a group of bandits who critically wound Joel via maximum penetration. Although in dire condition, Ellie gets Joel to a shelter in the mountains, hunting and caring for him while he barely clings to life. She eventually runs into those same bandits, trading antibiotics for meat when a standoff occurs. David, this creepy mofo, tells his companion to let Ellie free, allowing her to return to Joel and administer the penicillin. But the next morning, 
the bandits find their cabin and knock Ellie from her horse as she flees. After quite the scuffle, Ellie is captured and rendered unconscious. Ellie's transition from young optimism to very mature depression has already begun. At first by Joel's current inability to protect her from the world, and next by the real-life nightmare after she awakens. After being trapped in a cage and narrowly avoiding being cut to pieces, literally, Ellie is pinned against the ground by David during a fight. He warns that she has no idea what he's capable of, until she reaches for his machete and lethally stabs him butchering his corpse in a fit of rage long after he's dead. She only stops when Joel pulls her back, now recovered thanks to the medicine. He hugs her while she sobs, comforting Ellie after all she's been through. The story continues in the spring. Joel is incredibly upbeat for once in his goddamn life, smiling and cracking jokes on a whim. Unlike Ellie, who is distant and quiet, she doesn't try to pry into Joel's thoughts or sarcastically mess with him like she used to. The roles are reversed. Even when Joel spots the Firefly Hospital they've been searching so hard for, she acts indifferent. It's during this chapter where Joel and Ellie begin their all-important crossover. The entire journey, Joel was distant and worried while Ellie was cracking jokes and constantly pressing Joel to talk about his past. We can see in this very descriptive seesaw diagram that when one character is down, the other is up a feature very distinct to their relationship. Joel's life has been filled with death and presumed failures, while Ellie still has clung to her teenage innocence. It's only when Joel has to rely on Ellie that he begins to accept the world for what it is. She saved his life, took care of him. At last, Joel is not the single source of his own stability. The world feels like a kinder, safer place. Ellie, on the other hand, has experienced her first bout of true self-reliance. She for once saw the world for what it was without Joel or anybody there to protect her. There was no guardian watching over Ellie, just an insane cannibal with a machete who would have raped her were it not for a quick stab to the arm. With Joel finally opening up now that he could 100% depend on someone else, and Ellie feeling the harsh slap of reality of what independence truly means, the two have reversed roles. Joel has started his recovery from the same depression Ellie feels now, while Ellie's dark journey has only just begun. With that, let's take a ride on the Spoiler Express and see this dark, beautiful story to its end. Chugga 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 choo choo! Next is a scene of great importance where Ellie gives Joel an old picture of him and Sarah. Rather than ignore her or become angry like so many times before, he thanks her for the gift and acknowledges he can't escape his past. The moment is fleeting though, because as the two cross a torrent of water, Joel gets trapped and Ellie gets knocked unconscious trying to save him from drowning. When Joel's struggle is over, he drags Ellie from the water and tries to resuscitate her as a Firefly Patrol approaches. The soldier knocks Joel out and brings him to their hospital. He's informed Ellie is being prepped for a procedure to extract the infection from her brain in order to reverse engineer her immunity. It becomes clear this would kill Ellie, and so Joel breaks into the operating room kills the surgeon and carries Ellie away while dodging Firefly attempts to stop him. In the final scene, Ellie comes to in the back of a car, asking what happened. Joel tells her she wasn't the first immune to the fungus and that doctors have stopped looking for a cure because past procedures proved in vain, sparking Ellie to share a tragic anecdote from when her and her friend were first bitten and waited to die together. I'll let Ellie speak for herself. We didn't know what to do. So, she says, let's just wait it out. You know, we can be all poetic and just lose our minds together. I'm still waiting for my turn. Ellie. The importance of Ellie to Joel is unmissable here. He's willing to forego the well-being of the entire human race for the life of a single person. And it's because she's the only reason he's well on the path to emotional recovery after a lifetime of tragedy. It becomes bittersweet, however, once Ellie says she's waiting her turn to lose her mind. 
While Joel is feeling whole again, Ellie is passively suicidal. It's as if her acceptance of the world was transferred to Joel when she had to fend for herself during those horrifying times. Notice the sweet seesaw diagram. This mutual struggle has the emotional impact that it does thanks to Joel's realness. It's his questionable decisions to maraud for survival, as well as his insecurities about not fulfilling his role as a protector that make us feel that range of emotions. We all doubt ourselves at times, and perhaps make imperfect decisions. Joel is no exception. The idea that Joel is not a pillar of morality or endless source of perfect choices makes him so relatable to the average person, and thus his dark story hits us that much harder. Despite his very human shortcomings, this man is finding his peace. We can only hope Ellie will say the same one day. It's Joel's transformation in spite of his flaws, and Ellie's loss of innocence in spite of her age that makes The Last of Us a dark, brilliant feat of storytelling. And that's the story you ever knew. Don't miss. Coming soon. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. This is our 10th video, and we were so excited about your guys' reactions to Story You Never Knew that we decided to branch into a new series called Divergent Design, voiced by this guy. That's right, and if you want to see our, our breakdown of Oblivion, click the video down below. If you want to check out Gordon Freeman, The Story You Never Knew, click us. And that's it for now. See you guys next time.